moving on from Aston Martin, Pierre Gasly has also unsurprisingly extended with Alpine. You know, it was kind of, we, we kind of thought at the beginning of the season, like which French driver was going to stay or which one was going to leave. Right. And then clearly after Monaco, we knew Acon's out. So of course they're going to keep Gasly for that, you know, consistency, that continuance, um, especially in light of everything going on at Alpine and how ridiculous they are. They'll want that consistency in one of their drivers. Um, and so we'll, they'll, we'll have him there for a couple more years. But the real question on everybody's mind is who is going to team up with Gasly in 2025? Right. Uh I think that's the question right now. And I think that, honestly, the entire world of Formula One is at a standstill. Mm -hmm. um, as far as drivers moving, everyone is waiting for Carlos Sainz to announce where he's going. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've heard that Alpine's trying to poach him. Um, are they the best fit for him? I don't know. No. Nope. Uh, but no, I'm trying to be polite here. Uh, oh, but we're I not really... nice on this podcast. <laughs> you know what I think of Alpine. Uh, but yeah. I think that I think that every team has to hold their breath and every team has to say, uh, you know, if there's a chance we can get Carlos Sainz, we have to put everything on the back burner until we know whether or not that's going to happen. So um, I think that there's some awesome, uh, there's some great names out there, either both people who have been in the sport before and people who are new and developing and coming up. But I really don't think until Carlos tells us where he's going, which I don't think he even knows yet. Um, no, I mean, probably not. I mean, and, and Flavio Briatore, who is, you know, was with Renault, is now back at Alpine since he has been unbanned for life from Formula <laughs> One because that's right. how Formula One works. Um, he he kind of, you know, decided to sweep in at the last minute and direct the Alpine CEO to give Carlos an offer um, mm -hmm. while he's also courting the offers from Sauber and Audi and Williams. Um, right. So really it's Carlos needs to hurry the hell up because he's driving us all crazy, which is what Emily and I have been talking about for almost, you know, months now. Yeah. And he's not going to be able to play this game. Uh, not that he's playing a game, but he's not going to be able to play this game as long as I think he thinks he is. Uh, it's going to get to a point really quick where teams have got to make decisions and teams have got to move. And if he's uncommitted, they're going to go with someone who is. Um, not to say that the teams he wants to go on will have to make that decision, but uh, that decision is going to have to be made with or without him. So hopefully he comes to a decision before uh, someone has to say, well, see you later. Yeah, and I mean... Emily's really worried about that. We've talked about that a lot, but I, I don't think that the teams are dumb enough to let a, a driver at Carlos's caliber just go. Um, right. You know, I, we've, we've always said that Carlos is probably one of the most underrated drivers on the grid um, because for some reason, people think that Charles Leclerc, who is a great driver at Ferrari is better right. than Carlos, which I just still don't see. I, I don't understand how that works. Um, but there are so many options for that Alpine seat. You have, you know, Mercedes reserve driver and Alpine endurance driver, Mick Schumacher, who has Formula One experience. Mm -hmm. You have Alpine's reserve driver, Jack Dewan, who has been with Alpine for a hundred years. And then you have options like Botas or Zhou Guan Yu, um, who is looking at a seat or is looking to be a reserve driver next year because Zhou might be screwed. Yeah, I think that uh, I, I don't see them going with Joe. Uh, I could see them pulling him as a reserve driver mm -hmm. um, and promoting one of their other reserve drivers, whether it's uh, Dohan or Schumacher, into the actual seat and keeping uh, Zhu on standby. Uh, I don't see him. I don't see him being their choice. Uh, he's no, had I a couple of good don't. performances, but I, I don't think that if you're looking for if you're looking to get points, I don't see him being the we need points driver. Yeah, and they're just like like I I've said this a million times that like they just he hasn't been in a good enough car to showcase his talents because he's clearly a very talented driver and he's probably right. also incredibly underrated. Um, but the car he's in now at Sauber is just so terrible that you know it it really has hampered his entire Formula One career. Yeah, completely agree. Um you can't pick a driver based off what you think they will do in another car. You kind of have to go with the results that are out there. And it sucks for him that his career has been in a car that isn't showing results. And I don't think it's his fault, but when the teams are looking for who their driver is going to be, they've got to go with experience and they've got to go with results. And I think that Zhu will either uh, be a reserve driver and maybe get a chance in a faster car or do some test laps in a faster car. And someone will pick, pick up on that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but until that point, I don't see him being a, a huge pull for teams. Yeah, and I mean, that's happened before. SMN Akon took a year off um, between seats, and he served as a reserve driver um, mm-hmm. because, you know, he he lost out on a seat in one of the, you know, bigger, you know, driver market shuffles a few years ago. So it's it's not, you know, like this could be the end of his career, but it, right. it's, it's not looking good even with his, you know, hefty financial sponsorship backing. So... Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would be surprised if we didn't see him again, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him next year. Um, 